What's going on, everybody? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer. And now that episode three has gone live for year one pass holders, we get our first real taste of the firewall specialization, skill tree, and five stages of field research needed to unlock all the new vanity items, blueprints, apparel cache keys, and ultimately, the flamethrower itself if you did not purchase the year one pass. Okay, now since I do own the year one pass, I was able to instantly gain access to the flamethrower but like everyone else, would need to grind out the needed task to unlock the five stages of field research. Now in each of these, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks to make your lives easier and make your unlock journey more efficient. So let's get started. Stage one is really pretty easy and I don't think that I'm gonna need to do much explaining here. First up is Prelude, which requires you to set 10 enemies on fire, and notice it doesn't say what enemy type, so this could be anything from red bars up to heroic named elites. Your choice. But since we are trying to be efficient, red bars will do just fine. Now the easiest way to complete all of stage 1 in the shortest amount of time is on the DCD headquarters mission, which when non-invaded is an outcast faction mission. So I speed ran this mission with my Crusader Assault Shield paired with the Eagle Bearer, but you can do this with pretty much whatever gear set you want to use. There are so many flammable items that you can destroy in this mission while enemies are close to them, as well as the tanks on the backs of those Scorchers, Suicide Rushers, and Hip Packs on the side of the Grenadiers. So let's just say you should have zero issues catching 10 enemies on fire. Now while you complete this mission on normal difficulty, and that is important because you want as many Scorchers as possible to spawn in for this second objective, the competition. And you will encounter two to three of this Scorcher enemy type before ever reaching the boss. Now for the final encounter, kill the rest of the NPCs while leaving the boss and you should get another two Scorchers to spawn in. Kill them and then let the boss kill you and you will spawn back in right before the boss encounter and go ahead and rinse and repeat until you have the 10 Scorcher kills. This really shouldn't take you very long. Now I mentioned normal difficulty because for the farming method I used at the boss encounter, I was not able to get any Scorchers to spawn in for hard or challenge difficulty. It was only when I moved the difficulty to normal that I was able to get the pair of them to spawn in. Now for the final objective, up close and personal, just get in close on normal difficulty and tear the enemies a new one. If you have even just an average build, getting 20 kills within seven meters should pose you no issues. Now as you achieve those kills in close, the objective will update in the bottom left hand of your screen so you can see how many more you need to finish this portion of the research. Once you have completed all three of these objectives, you will receive some apparel cache keys along with the Caldera and Lava Lake vanity skins. Caldera is a weapon skin, showing now on your screen, and Lava Lake is a gear die. And now you can see what that one looks like as well. So overall, stage one should take you about 10 to 15 minutes, and if you use the Scorcher farming method, you will complete all three of these objectives in one completion of DCD Headquarters. Stage two moves from three to four objectives, and they get a bit more specific, but again, these should pose you no real problems. Now for the first three objectives, Wild About It, Name and Shame, and Inhumane, I packed them all together when running Roosevelt Island in search of the Wildfire Boss. Now, since the west portion of DC is invaded this week, you will need to first clear Federal Emergency Bunker and Potomac Event Center to unlock Roosevelt, and then you can get on the hunt for the Wildfire, as she is an outcast boss. So remember, do not run Roosevelt on Invaded, or you will never see her. Anyways, about halfway through the mission, which you can speed run on normal difficulty, you will end up at the Burn Pit, and this is where the Wildfire will appear. Now when she does appear, she yells out, I hope you boys like barbecue. And that's when you know that she is on the battlefield and you are all clear to engage. 
For this part of the encounter, you will need to first thin out the NPCs just a bit to get her to spawn, and then I used the Firefly drone to blind her. Once she is blinded, it makes it much easier to target the fuel tank on her back, and then once that blows up, just go ahead and finish her off. Now, here is where you can really save yourself some time. Once you have downed her the first time with the fuel tank objective, just toss a grenade at your feet and you will respawn back in just before the burn pit. Once you have spawned back in, rinse and repeat with the Firefly drone on the wildfire and you will have three kills on named enemies while they are afflicted by a status effect done. While here at the burn pit, select any of the NPCs, blind them and then maybe set them on fire with a grenade or flame turret or even do this to the wildfire and use the rinse and repeat method with the grenade at your feet to respawn and the inhumane objective will be done in no time. Now you don't need to finish Roosevelt, so after you have these three objectives complete, just fast travel back to the base of operations. The no smoking objective is really straightforward. Just speed run Manning National Zoo against the outcast on normal difficulty to finish up stage two of the firewall research. Once completed, you will receive the Ammo Dump Blueprint, which is a high-end Badger Tough holster with the perfectly reassigned talent. Now this perfect talent grants you six rounds of randomly chosen special ammo to your sidearm for killing a status affected enemy. In addition, you will also get the firewall safety helmet, which is a firefighter's helmet showing now. Stage two will take you much longer than stage one, only because it will require full runs of Federal Emergency Bunker, Potomac Event Center, and Manning National Zoo to complete. Now the real trick is to merge the first three tasks into one with the wildfire burn pit farm to save yourselves some much needed time. Jumping right into stage three, and we are now up to five objectives. And for the sake of saving time, I used Federal Emergency Bunker on normal difficulty to finish up Bloodied Bloodhound, Cruel and Unusual, and Sick Burn. And with a decent enough build, you can blitz Federal in 10 to 15 minutes max. And I used these hallways to finish up Cruel and Unusual while nailing the explosives on the outcast rushers. Now, I don't know why, but by hitting those flashing explosive detonators and then covering the rushers and anyone around them in flames, Flames, I was able to quickly nail down five kills in this manner. Also while in this mission, I would purposely attempt to enter any flames I could to set myself on fire and then hip fire at the closest NPC to my location. You could also find yourself some cover and place a flame turret directly behind you and let it set you on fire and then blind fire over cover, but make sure the turret does not have a lot of skill power as it could kill you quickly. For the Bloodied Bloodhound objective, I used my Aces and Eights build with next to no skill power and the Stinger Hive. Even though the lore text doesn't state it, you need to kill this boss with bullets, so don't let your Stinger Hive get out of control. Once he was under the bleed status effect, I just opened up on him, and with my Aces build, it was done. Now you don't have to use Aces, but a high DPS, low skill power build is recommended for this. For the Pistolero and Orbital Burn objectives, I paired them together on Space Administration HQ. Once again, with a decent enough build, you should have no issues with getting to the final boss in well under 15 minutes. Once the Master Sergeant boss spawns in, unload on him enough to break his armor, but stop there. Next, focus on the NPCs in the chamber, but make sure not to kill them all, and after a short while the boss will drop down to the floor with you. Just swap over to your sidearm, in my case I equipped a double barrel sawed off shotgun, and just finish them off. Finally, either throw a grenade at your feet or let the remaining NPCs finish you off, and once you respawn, you will be in the final room, ready to start the boss encounter over. Just keep rinsing and repeating until you have the 5 kills versus named enemies using your sidearm. Finish off the few remaining NPCs and the mission will show completed, and you are done with stage 3. For completing stage 3, you will receive some apparel cash keys and the firewall shirt and pants showing now. Overall, stage 3 should take you less time than stage 2 as you will not need to run other missions in order to unlock a stronghold.
Stage 4 will once again task you with completing 5 objectives before completion. What we are looking for is efficiency, so I used Potomac Event Center to complete the Bigger Man, Sword and Shield, and That's Just Mean objectives. Now by now, you should have been able to unlock the shield within the firewall skill tree, and by equipping this skill and making your way through Potomac on normal difficulty, you will be able to find more than enough red bars to net the five enemy kills with melee attacks using the ballistic shield. Make sure to try and drop their health bars or armor bars for veterans before attempting the shield bash. With just a little practice, you will get a feel for how much damage it can do and will have this objective done in no time flat. That's just mean requires that you taunt burning enemies before killing them by saluting them. All you need to do is equip your salute emote. Find three red bar enemies, catch them on fire, and while they are burning, quickly salute them before they die. I used the flamethrower itself. Hit the red bars with a really quick burst of flame and quickly tap the salute emote to finish up this objective within minutes. Of course, you could use an air burst, flame turret, or even incendiary rounds, but the flamethrower is so much fun and makes short work of this objective. The bigger man requires that you make it all the way to the end of Potomac Event Center and destroy the Corpulence ammo pack before killing him. He is the second of the named bosses who appear at the end of the mission, so I quickly killed off every other NPC and then waited for the Corpulent to present himself. Use your Firefly drone to quickly blind him so he slows down. Fire a few rounds into his ammo bag and once it pops, finish him off. For the skill thrill objective, I actually ran five normal bounties and when I got to the bosses, I just let my skills do the killing. Hives, seeker mines, I mean whatever, you get the point. Five hard bounties should not take you long. And you could also down end of mission bosses, open world bosses, or some of the classified missions like the Seaquarium and kill the Buzz boss. The point is, just look for quick ways to get this done as grinding out a heroic mission solo for 45 minutes to get to the final boss is not what I'm talking about. The fire down below objective is self-explanatory. Run the DARPA Research Labs mission on hard or higher and just finish the mission. If you have a decent skill build, down Petrus Brenner at the end of the mission with your skills and have it count towards the five needed. For completing the Stage 4 objectives, you will receive the blueprint for the perfect honey badger called the Savage Wolverine which you can craft. You will also receive the Basalt and Tremor vanity skins. The Savage Wolverine features the perfectly close and personal weapon talent that for killing a target within 10 meters grants plus 50% weapon damage for 10 seconds. And for you to see, here are the Basalt Weapon Skin and Tremor Gear Die. By taking just a second, slowing down, and formulating out a plan of attack, Stage 4 should not be that punishing. Remember to attempt three objectives on Potomac, look for hard bounties for skill thrill, and don't get bogged down resource farming on the DARPA research labs, and you will be through stage four in no time flat. Okay agents, we've made it to the fifth and final stage, and for those of you that do not own the year one pass, once you have completed this step, you will finally unlock the flamethrower itself. Of all the stages, this one will take you the longest, as it involves you completing two full missions, and they're doing some random NPC hunts, and it will also require you to complete an invaded stronghold on hard or higher difficulty. All right, let's get started. Step one is really straightforward. For the Sum Disassembly Required objective, you need to complete the Pentagon mission on normal or higher difficulty and destroy the giant quadcopter at the end of the mission, which is labeled the XB-31 Marauder. After that, for the Dragon Hunter objective, you need to complete Tidal Basin and Blind Wyvern twice before killing her on normal or higher difficulty. Now, I just did a speed run on Tidal Basin on normal difficulty solo, and this shouldn't really cause you any problems, as long as you pay attention when dealing with multiple Black Tusk heavies. Just before reaching Wyvern, switch one of your skills over to the Firefly drone and enter the final battle with Wyvern. While taking on the NPCs and disabling the various rocket launchers, look to see if Wyvern has the immunity symbols or not. 
If not, target her with the Firefly drone and let it do its thing. Remember, you need to blind her twice during this battle, so you might as well do one early in the fight and save the second one for just before you want to kill her. Now, I was concerned about this mechanic not registering, so I blinded her more than two times just to be sure. Here's a little tip and trick to complete the conflagration competition objective, and it involves us returning to our old friend, the wildfire boss on Roosevelt. Now, in order to complete this objective, we need to eliminate 10 elite scorchers, and the wildfire qualifies as that type of NPC. Speed run Roosevelt on non-invaded normal difficulty until you reach the burn pit. Start eliminating NPCs until the wildfire makes her appearance. Drop her as quickly as possible and then immediately throw a grenade at your feet to kill yourself. You will respawn just outside the burn pit and all you need to do is rinse and repeat this mechanic until you have the necessary 10 elite scorcher kills. For the blood bag objective, use those bounties to knock this one out quickly. However, unlike in stage four, we don't want the skills to kill the NPC, but instead just apply the bleed status effect. Now I used my high DPS aces build as it puts out decent DPS and has very little skill power along with a stinger hive and it worked like a charm. Speed run the bounty mission and once you get to the boss, drop your stinger hive to apply the bleed status effect on the named boss. Once the effect has taken hold, unleash with your primary weapon and you should drop the boss quickly. The final objective, burning down the house, requires you to complete any invaded stronghold mission on hard or higher difficulty. And for this, I just used the matchmaker and squatted up with several randoms that were already a little bit into Roosevelt invaded. Together, we finished the mission in just under 15 minutes and stage five was finally complete. Once stage five is complete, you will gain access to the firewall flamethrower if you don't own the year one pass, and you will also receive the mundane flamethrower skin as the premium reward. If you plan accordingly, the time needed to complete stage five can be reduced, but this stage will require the most end time mission of any of the stages. Well, there you have it, all five firewall stages and objectives with tips and tricks clearly explained and I appreciate you watching the entire video. I will include timestamps in the video description as well as in my pinned comment so you can easily reference the different stages as you make your way through the level ups. As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts in the comment section below. If you haven't already, please take the time to smash that sub button and click on the bell icon to receive all notifications from my YouTube channel. If you liked what you saw, please rate the video with a thumbs up, if not, a thumbs down. If you feel like supporting my YouTube content, check in the video description for links to my Patreon page and Teespring merchandise stores. If you want to follow me on Twitter, here is my ID, and I post on most things gaming related with a heavy emphasis on the Division franchise. Until my next upload, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.